Welcome to Photoshop 2024, the best new features. What's so amazing about them? You'll see. But if I were you, I'd be very excited. And this is just the beginning. Want to learn Photoshop and not just the new features, but every feature there is? Then I have a comprehensive video course that I've been recording and perfecting since, and this is true, 1999. More on that in just a moment, but first, let's see one of those best new features in Photoshop 2024. All right, so get psyched. Photoshop 2024, best new feature number one. I dare say one of the best new features in the last decade. I doubt I get much pushback, except from folks who are thinking not one of, it's the best feature, Deke, and that is generative fill. Perhaps you've heard of it. Maybe you've seen it demoed. Maybe you've played with it yourself, but I want you to understand exactly how it works. So for starters, it uses machine learning, let's not call it artificial intelligence, because it's not, to invent photo quality, the image detail from scratch by the way and so every time you are going to get different results and you're going to get different results from everyone else out there it communicates with adobe firefly what's that well it's this crazy online technology right here you can get to it by going to firefly.adobe.com but you don't have to and that's because photoshop can communicate with adobe firefly directly as long as you have an active internet connection very important if you don't then generative fill will not work well what do you do with something that invents photo quality image detail well I can think of three things, starting with remove unwanted elements from a photograph. We've been able to do that using the healing brushes and, of course, Content Aware Fill. Is this all that much better? Oh, yeah, you bet it is. You can also add anything you can imagine in a way of a photographic object. Sometimes it's going to work great, sometimes not so much. This is known as text to image because you're going to have to enter a text prompt. And then finally, you can replace an entire background if you want to. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment but by way of demonstration consider this very slide right here i want a snazzier background should i take it in a powerpoint or should i stay inside photoshop 2024 and take advantage of generative fill as i've done right here every single time you are going to get different results all right so i created this composition using my traditional skills inside photoshop as well as some ai i've also gone ahead and flattened this image so we have just a background and nothing more inside the layers panel. I'm thinking three aliens is enough, four is too many. So I'm just going to select this guy generally using the rectangular marquee tool. Nothing fancy, by the way. And then we've got this other new feature inside Photoshop 2024. Nothing to write home about. It's the content aware taskbar. You can get to it by choosing this command right here. And notice that I'm seeing this generative fill button. If I click on it, I'll see a text prompt. I don't need to worry about that in this case however I'll just click generate and that's because when you're just trying to get rid of stuff like this alien head what you want to do is just let Photoshop read the edges of the selection outline as it did right here so just so we have a before and after this is before and notice the sand and these geological sort of formations here this mesa and this is after so it's gone ahead and replaced all that stuff inside the selection with something new not just one but three times so notice one of three right here we have three variations that's the first one that's the second one but sh be sure to check them out by the way just in case one's better than the other you can also see them over here in the properties panel on the right side of the screen now let's say i want some just completely new fanciful detail inside of this image i am once again going to draw a very rough selection just marquee an area using the rectangular marquee. I'll click generative fill, of course, but this time because I want to create something new there, I'm going to enter a text prompt. Strange distant building from extraterrestrial culture whatever in the world that means. You will see a tip up here at the top of the screen. You can read it if you want to while away the time. But in less than 30 seconds, in my experience, you are going to see something different. Adobe promises in less than 60 seconds, by the way. And notice, here's one of the variations. Here's another one. 
no uh, building this time, so that's a problem. And then this is the third one. So we got two out of three buildings. That's pretty good. I happen to like this one the best. All right, now let's just replace the background. Why don't we? In which case, notice over here in the Layers panel, I have two new layers, each of which is a generative fill layer. They're both editable. By the way, I can come back to them anytime I like. I'm going to turn them off and click on a flat background once again, just so I can click on Select Subject, not Remove Background, because that would just make the background background transparent, which is not what I want. I'll select the subject, which isn't really what I want either because that selects all the aliens. I want to switch that to select the background by clicking on invert selection up here in the contextual taskbar because it keeps moving around. And now I'll go ahead and click generative fill once again. It moves to the bottom of the screen this time. I like to think it's trying to help me as opposed to being a pain in the neck, but I'm going to paste in a text prompt once again. Extraterrestrial planet with strange colorful trees, and I'll go ahead and click generate. And now it's up to you whether you like what you see. This is the first variation this time around. This is the second. This is the third. I'm thinking that one's okay, but if you're not liking any of them, just go ahead and click generate, the generate button right there, in order to generate three additional variations. And that is how you take advantage of Photoshop 2024's best new feature, generative fill. Now, generative fill and the two new features that follow represent real innovations, the kind that Photoshop is famous for, the reasons that year after year, Photoshop remains undefeated as the best imaging software ever made. Want to learn all about it? Then join me as I develop an all-new version of my award-winning video course, Photoshop One-on-One. -on -One. From fundamentals to advanced to mastery, one-on-one -on -one ranks among the most popular commercial Photoshop courses of all time. But it's not for the squeamish, by which I mean it's long, and appropriately so. Short rinky-dink course, tiny little learning. Long authoritative course that you can come back to over and over again. Big comprehensive Photoshop knowledge. But don't worry about the length. We'll be making it together in real time. And when you know it, the six video hour long lesson one is ready for you right now. To get started, all you have to do is go to deeknow.com, where you learn two very important things. First, if you're a member of my Patreon, just like that, 50% off. Second, buy now and save even more with my early bird discount. To learn all about it, go to deeknow.com. And now, more of those best new features in Photoshop 2024. Now, for Photoshop 2024's best new feature number two, Generative Expand, which might surprise a couple of you. I've been critical of this feature in the past. We'll come to why in just a moment. But even I have to acknowledge that while it's not as groundbreaking as Generative Expand, it is a close second. What does it do? Well, it's nothing short of magic, I tell you. It extends the width and or height of any image you like. So you can take a tiny little postage stamp of a portrait shot and turn it into a big, immense landscape if you want to. How does it work? These first two yellow items are the same as generative fill. So it uses machine learning, photographic image detail, communicates with Adobe Firefly. It needs an active internet connection, but otherwise it's different. It works in combination with the crop tool, as we'll see, and it adds horizontal and or vertical detail when you, my word, uncrop an image, that is, expand the canvas without enlarging the image itself. After all, somehow you need to add new pixels Generative Expand is the solution. Does it have an Achilles heel? Yes, it does. The resolution may suffer. I'm being kind. The resolution will suffer, as you're about to see. But I'll show you a workaround as well. All right, so this guy, once again, is going to be our image. And this time, it's because he's tiny. He's just like a little 2 megapixel image. About 2,000 pixels wide, about 1,000 pixels tall. If you're working with a higher resolution image, which you undoubtedly are, then the resolution problems are going to be that much more obvious. All right, so I'm going to switch to the crop tool right here, and then I want to direct your attention not to the contextual taskbar, but to the options bar up here. Turn off delete crop pixels. That's got to be off. Otherwise, you're going to lose pixels. And then, or it's going to be a flat image. You don't want that either. And then set the fill to generative expand. That way, we don't have to worry about this button down here. Now, notice if I start dragging this edge, it's 2012 pixels wide. Well, I want to make it, let's say, 2600 pixels. 
Nailed it. So 600 pixels wider. That's great. And now on this side, I'll make it, let's say, 2,900 pixels wide. So I added 300 pixels here, just adding a little bit. And now notice down here, it's 1,300 pixels tall for starters, and I'm going to make it 2,200 pixels tall. So 900 pixels taller. And that way we're under 1,000 pixels. That will become important for a reason I will demonstrate in just a moment. Now I could click generate and it'll just add pixels based on what it sees around the edges, but I'm going to add a prompt, desert sand mirage reflection. That should be wild, don't you think? And sure enough, it is. And we do have the standard three variations once again. I can click through them here in the contextual taskbar. I'll just go with this first guy because I think it's pretty wonderful. However, it is not without its problem. And so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here to 300%, let's say. So you can see here's Skeletor, the alien, right? I made him. He's nice and detailed. And then these rippling edges of this geological detail right here are clearly defined even though we've got some big pixels but notice the stuff that generative expand added is murky at best it's kind of gummy it's soft and it's even jagged look at that those transitions right there are jagged and that's because what happens is that photoshop makes a request to firefly and firefly says here's the pixels and it gives Photoshop, one to two megapixels. That's the best it can do. That is not going to get better in the next 12 months. I got news for you. That is the state of AI imaging across the entire planet. It's just extremely processor intensive. Somebody's got to pay for that processing. Well, right now it's Adobe, and so they don't want to pay a lot. Anyway, that's why we're taking this two megapixel image that's been stretched to fit this new space right here. And that's why we're seeing the gumminess and the jaggedness and that kind of stuff right there. Compare it to what happens if I turn that layer off for a moment, I'll click on layer zero. That's the layer that the crop tool made. It just called it layer zero. And let's drag this over a little bit. I'll grab my marquee tool right here. And that is great because what it allows me to do, I can just draw a rectangular selection and I can see how big it is. And notice those dimensions right there. It's nearly 600 pixels wide. It's getting to be 500, more than 500 pixels tall. As long as it's under a megapixel, that is a thousand by a thousand, you're good to go. Because that way you're working with something that Adobe Firefly can give you. And now I can just click generate to fill right there, click generate again and let Photoshop do its thing. And notice that it's pretty good. It's not an exact match by any stretch of the imagination. Things do get soft, a little bit soft right there. And we could check out the other variations to see whether they're any better. I do like this guy right here. Looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Because it has that fold. Now, is it an exact match? No, it's not. Is it going to be as sharply defined? No, not quite. However, it's way better than generative expand. And it's not because generative fill is better than generative expand. They're both doing the same darn thing. You're just doing it a little bit differently in terms of how you interact with them. But otherwise, it's just that generative expand is asking for so much more. And generative fill is asking for so much less. But notice it does a lot less as well. I just have this one little area covered. I'd have to do the, the top corner and this corner and, and this area over here as well. I just want to show you, notice even though it's 300 pixels tall or 1300 pixels tall, it's only 300 wide. So that's less than a megapixel. And then we have these regions down here as well. So it's going to take a lot more effort to fill this in with generative fill. And we might not have the flexibility of asking for this mirage reflection either. And so even though generative fill has a way to go to really earn a spot, I think, in our hearts, it is a wonderful new feature, powerful as well, here inside Photoshop 2024. And finally, Photoshop 2024's best new feature number three, the Remove Tool, which is yet another retouching tool inside this software. If nothing else, you can think of it as being a next generation healing brush. But let's take a quick look at how this tool really works. Why don't we? Like the healing brushes, it works its magic by matching pixels around any given brush stroke. So it's looking at the edges of your brush strokes, reading those pixels and figuring out how to merge them successfully 
successfully so you have seamless transitions with the original details. But where it goes its own way is it employs its own pattern learning. And this is really next generation stuff. So basically, instead of just sampling pixels from inside the image, which it does do, so you still have to keep an eye out for repeating details, but it's also applying its own pattern learning. And that goes to basically trying to match real world details. Now this is built in information. In other words, it's not generative. It's not going out to Firefly. So it does not require an internet connection. It's going to favor majority pixels. So it's going to get rid of the outlying stuff. Hence the word remove in the title of the tool. You can paint like a brush if you want to, or you can surround a region as if you're working with the lasso tool. This last feature is new, it's clunky, but it is there, I'll show it to you. And it supports sample all layers, so you can paint to an independent layer, which means you can apply non-destructive changes. So here are my aliens against their new colorful tree background. It's actually in the foreground, but what have you. However, we've got some problems, right? The edges don't really match all that well. This guy's terrible. But anyway, we're going to take care of things by bringing up this fly menu right here and selecting the remove tool and notice up here in the traditional options bar we've got some important checkboxes so see how i'm seeing a ghostbusters icon i can't paint directly on the group that's selected in the layers panel so what i need to do is create a new layer by pressing Control shift command shift n i'll just call this new layer removals let's say and click ok and then i'll turn on sample all layers so that i can paint from the existing layers onto the new layer right here and I'll increase the size of my brush stroke a little bit by pressing the right bracket key and then I'll do the traditional stuff right let's say I want to get rid of some of the you know the the anomalies inside this guy's face right here paint away those the the, the sort of crater details right there and so in that regard it's going to work a lot like the healing brush just more slowly so it's not as fast as the healing brush, which is worth noting, but it is good at smoothing. So watch this. I'll just go ahead and paint along this guy's kind of rippling skull right here, which got worse. It used to be smoother than, like, than this in the first place before I added all the colorful trees. But notice after painting that brush stroke, things do smooth out. But it'd be nice if I could not like paint a big brush stroke at a time. You know what I mean? Because that's actually kind of frustrating if you make a mistake. So turn off this checkbox, remove after each stroke. That way, watch this. I can just paint here a little bit. And then I could paint here a little bit more as well. And then I can increase the size of my brush stroke and paint something thicker and then press the enter key this time in order to make that stuff go away. That's kind of a disaster right there. I could redo it or I could try again. All kinds of options are available to me. I was telling you that it's gonna favor the majority detail. So if I paint here, this is mostly brownish stuff that it's gonna see around the edges of the brush stroke in particular. So it's gonna heal that blue stuff away. So that's something that's worth keeping an eye out for. You can also, this guy right here is disappointing me so badly. So what I can do is lasso him like so. And, and notice that I just painted around his face, but that just went and selected his entire face. Is that a cool feature? If you say so. And then I'll just go ahead and press the enter key in order to fill that stuff in. And that's what I'm talking about with the pattern learning. So it's not just sampling pixels from inside the image. This is crazy stuff right here. This is stuff that the remove tool just decided it wanted to add. And so I'm just gonna paint some more inside these regions over here, paint over here as well. And you can go nuts, right? Paint as many brush strokes as you want because this checkbox, which is now dimmed because it's turned off before I started painting, is, is turned off. And now I can just press the enter key and allow that tool to do its work in one fell swoop. Some other options that I have available to me, I can click and shift click like so in order to paint in straight lines. Wouldn't be able to do that if that checkbox were on. So it was removing after each brush stroke because each click would be treated as a brush stroke, which is not what I wanted. So I am clicking and shift clicking. And then I might just go ahead and combine that with a lasso. 
Oh my goodness, isn't that something? And I could click and shift click down here. Actually, I forgot to press the shift key, so I will. And I'll shift click down this edge. And here's another thing to keep in mind. Let's say you go kind of crazy. You just lose your mind for a second. You paint way too much stuff right here. Well, you can unpaint, notice, Right there in the center of that circular brush stroke, or brush that is, there's a plus sign showing me I'm gonna add. If I press the Alt or Option key, I get a minus sign, which is showing me that I'm gonna subtract from the brush stroke. And then I'll press the Enter key in order to smooth out that edge. And that, my friends, is my brief introduction to the myriad ways you can use the Remove tool a new, a best new feature here inside Photoshop 2024. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget to learn how to make this. Join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And just like that, you'll get 50% off my soup to nuts video course, Photoshop one-on-one -on -one fundamentals. I'm Deke McClelland. This is Deke Now.